Okay, so my favorite method of running an OS is generally on an SSD drive. And uh, this is a Kingston SSD drive, one of the fastest I've got. I think it is the fastest I've got. Um, I've done a lot of speed tests on SD cards and also USB sticks. And I'm going to do some more tests today on USB sticks because I got recommended this Samsung one. And uh, it's, it's actually pretty decent. It really stands out well. So let's switch over to screen capture. As always, I'll put results of the speed test in the description and also some previous speed tests as well. So I've done various things with USB sticks and in most cases, USB sticks are awful for running an OS from. I would say the vast majority of USB sticks I've tried have been incredibly slow and definitely not worth using. That said, they, are, they tend to be very compatible. Uh, so they tend to work with anything that supports USB boot. So if you're having trouble with an operating system with USB boot, I've often suggested just try it with an ordinary USB stick and see if it works. Because often the problem with an SSD drive is the type of cable you use, not the SSD drive. It tends to be the USB to SATA cable. And I've got a link in the description to the CSL one that I use, which tends to work with pretty much everything. So the fastest I've ever seen on a USB stick is one that I don't own. Uh, and it's in this video. You can see it in the thumbnail. So on the right hand side, you've got a Corsair one. Corsair Voyager, I think it's called. I tested the black Arcanite one that I've got a while ago and it was disappointing. As a stick, I'm still really glad I've got it because it's nice and fast and it, and it tends to work really well. So you can see here the Corsair, uh, and again, I'll copy this into the description, uh, it's really fast. So se sequential write speed is something you'd expect on a USB stick to be quite good because that's kind of what you want for writing files to it. But for running an OS, the random read and write speed is very important and it's really fast uh, on this Corsair. But as a USB stick, uh, well in fact I must have a link in here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's open that and see what Amazon are currently selling it for because it generally isn't cheap. So £53. I'm sure it was about £70 when I last reviewed it and there's the Arcanite I bought which is £24. So very different in price but massively different in speed. Uh, so the Arcanite I wouldn't use for an operating system really. Uh, even though it uh, it does pass, uh, it was it was just slower than I expected it to be. So 29735 for the sequential write speed. Random write speed is 1062 and random read speed is 2088. And you can see here uh, in this speed test on a very cheap Yukon 60 gig drive, uh, it was so what have we got, 225,000, so sequential write speed was way faster than both of the others. The random write speed, 16,000 versus 12,000, and the random read speed was actually a bit slower than the Corsair, but still very, very respectable for what I would have paid probably about 10 pound, 12 pound. In fact, I paid 12.99, it's down there. Well, let's do the same thing with Amazon and see what it's saying at the moment, 15.99. So I'm gonna copy that text over and pop it on my Arcanite USB stick because I probably still have my previous speed to A. I've still got that on there. That's nice and handy. So if we just move that down a bit and do USB, well I call them USB sticks. The trouble is with USB sticks, there's so many different names for them. Uh, right, so, and then we'll do SD cards. But you can see here, so the fastest I think I've got is, it's either between the SanDisk Extreme Pro or the Kingston Canvas Go. And so we're looking at sequential write speed, 32,000, so way, way slower than, uh, than the Corsair, but still faster than the Arcanite. And then random write speed on, say for instance, the Kingston 1521 and read speed 3,621. So the Kingston SD card, uh, definitely beats the Arcanite USB stick that I've got for running an OS on it. So we're gonna use the Kingston as, as our sort of benchmark. Um, so let's save all of that and boot up from the first Arcanite stick, which is a USB-C to USB-A stick. And I thought it might be okay, uh, but it was only, I think it was only about a tenner, so I thought I might as well use it as a stick. But it's also useful for my Mac, which I've got USB-C on that, for transferring files over, and also for certain Android phones and Windows phones use USB-C. And if I ever upgrade my iPad, then that will use USB-C as well. So this is the USB-C to USB-A one. So if I unlock this Windows phone and pop it in the bottom here, I can then go into Files, 
uh, and you can have a look at what's on the stick. So if I click on this uh, and I go, so this is the boot drive or the boot partition rather. Uh, and so I could use this phone and I do the same. I've got another video where I do this with an iPhone for overclocking. So if I go into config.txt, you can see this opens up in, uh, it's probably Word or something like that. And you can move it around and uh, you can overclock and various different things on that. Okay, so let's pop it in the pipe. And we're going to boot up from that. So switch off and switch on again. Now, strangely, this stick takes absolutely ages to boot. I did try it initially with Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, which is what I usually use as a system, especially for all my speed tests. Uh, I try to keep it exactly the same, but it wouldn't work at all. I tried restoring operating systems. I tried writing it new uh, with various different methods, and nothing would work properly. This is the only thing I could get to boot, and this is the beta version of 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. And as you can see, uh, I think it does get there eventually but it takes absolutely ages. So it finally booted up. Uh, you can see there's a black border around it because I haven't even done that yet. Uh, so if I go into uh, diagnostics and run tests, I usually do two of these. You can see it's taking its time, usually means it's failing the test. I think it's because it's not a standard USB stick. So there must be something extra in there that allows it to work with USB-C and USB-A devices. And uh, I think that's why it's problematic to try and run an operating system on the Pi. Because as, as I said earlier in the video, I haven't had any problems with USB sticks at all. Every single USB stick I've used has always worked for USB boot. Obviously, if the operating system supports it and the Pi EEPROM is up to date, then everything seems to work. Okay, so no surprise that it failed on the first test because it took ages. It's even taken a while to show the log. So, uh, yeah, 83,912, well that's all right, uh, but the random ride speed 70, random read speed 192. What did we get in the second run? So there'll be three runs here in total. Oh, quite even runs the operating system slow. Uh, so yeah, so 3,076, so, Overall, just pretty bad, really. Uh, I usually save the best test. Uh, well, let's do that test again. Reset, run tests. Okay, so we have fail again. Hit show log. That came up a lot faster. So let's try and fail, 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 fail pass. So, <laughs> it's always failed the random write speed on every single test. Uh, the random read speed it passed on this one, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's almost not even worth including it in there. Uh, obviously, the 83,000 here just, just never reappeared again. So I guess I'm going to go, as this did a bit of a pass in here, let's do it on that. But this is, again, I, there's nothing wrong with this USB stick. It just isn't suitable for running an operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've been transferring files from my Mac, playing with it on phones and things like that, and it's been absolutely fine. So let's call up the speed test. It's not even letting me write or type or hit enter or anything like that. It's weird, it, it let me paste it in, but it's not letting me save it, so I'll have to do that on the next operating system. If I press return, it doesn't do anything. So hopefully it will save. It looks like it's saved. I'm just going to take a photo of it on my phone so I've got a record of it. Right, and let's boot up with the Samsung bar. So this is the one I was recommended to get, this Samsung bar. And uh, it's a nice feeling USB stick. It's got this sort of bulbous bit on the end, so it's nice and easy to take out and put in. Um, but also it's very slim, uh, and so it doesn't restrict other USB devices. But what the commenter said is that you can actually take out the inside of this and use it as a very, very small and neat USB stick if you want. I'm not gonna do that because I actually like the stick and uh, I don't have a need for it at the moment. If I do in the future, then I'll do that. But let's switch it on. Okay, so that booted up nice and fast. And uh, if I go to the video that I had the comment on, uh, so this was my micro SD cards tested video. And uh, if I scroll down, and this was the comment I had from PGT MR2, Samsung bar flash drive, 64 gig, for the price of SanDisk Extreme, not Pro. 
uh, and also in here it says you can only fit one vertically in a pie however if you pull the flashcard internals out with a pick and flip them over you can stack two so bear that in mind as well uh, and let's do a speed test so let's close that down so thanks very much for that comment so these are my speed tests in a list. I've uh, amended that one so it says Arcanite USB-C and I'm just waiting for the Samsung speed test. So that was nice and fast. So that would that would have done it first time. Oh, let's minimize that a bit. Uh, and let's run it a second time, reset and run tests. So 31,644, so passed very well on that. Random write speed very fast. 4,496 and random read speed 2,863. So it's all looking very respectable. So let's show the log on that one as well. And let's pick the fastest one out of the two. I think I'm gonna go with this one because it's got a better random write speed. And this is where, well, the Arcanite USB-C, obviously there was something wrong there. Uh, it just isn't compatible. Uh, but if we compare this with the two fastest A2 cards, which are usually quite expensive micro SD cards, um, We've got sequential write speed 32,251, so slightly slower on the sequential write speed, but the random write speed was way quicker at 4,496. The random read speed was slightly slower. Uh, so it's close, but if the price is cheaper for the USB stick uh, and you're getting such a good sequential write speed, uh, it's it's got to be pretty good. It's certainly something worth considering, and obviously things like these prices go up and down all the time. It's certainly be the SanDisk Extreme Pro by quite a margin there uh, on the random write speed. It's way way better. The random read speed is a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, it was a great comment. Thanks very much for that. The one other thing to bear in mind if you're using a USB drive is that you're taking up another USB socket, whereas if you're using an SD card, which is a similar speed, you might favour the SD card as an option. Whichever works for you. I'm glad I've got it. It's certainly interesting to test it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.